Hello everyone, welcome to IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Joel Ward, and with me today is the founder of Data Driven, Jeff. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, so Jeff, uh, give me a quick background about Data Driven. What, what is Data Driven and how did you get started with Data Driven? Sure. So I before I got started with Data Driven, my background was in the agency world. Mm-hmm. I started as like a website designer, and then eventually that made me a marketer because websites are somebody's you know somebody's opportunity to market to new people and uh, it turned out that i was more interested in marketing than i was in websites and so my agency yeah. took off like crazy in the mid 2000s um grew over 8 years we grew by five people or from five people to 50 or 50 people um lots of revenue lots of cool stuff but i got a little bit burnt out on it and so okay. while i was trying to grow the company there was very few qualified people to hire for my team and so I was doing training sessions and I decided that I liked the training more than I liked the the running the agency part. And so I became a full-time trainer. And so that's what Data Driven does is we help people become more skilled in marketing and data-driven marketing specifically and give them the confidence they need to be the the ones that the agencies and the companies will hire. Do you, during that time when you were starting it, was there a need for such a such a place in the marketplace for what you do now? For sure. And and there still remains one, right? So um, it's changed. It's evolved over the years. Uh, it started out in a classroom. So okay. before online became really a thing and pre-recorded courses and so on, I was in a little trade school in Minneapolis, Minnesota, just doing classes, 10, 20, sometimes 30, 40 people in the classroom learning okay. these these Google technologies. Uh, one of the students in the classroom was was a university and they said, okay, can you come and do this at the university level? So I started teaching at the university and and, and really enjoyed that. And then um, around that time, I said, okay, well, I actually really enjoy this. I'm going to start doing online courses, create my own academy and build my own my own group of students because I, I felt like we could move faster online um, than we could in person. And then just, just not being tied so much to the university system gives us so much more flexibility. Yeah. So tell me about your Google certification program. Sure. Yeah. So we have a program. It's it's really the one of the only ones out there in the world now, but it's for okay. Google Analytics 4, which is the newest version of Google Analytics. It's okay. the one that everybody's going to have to move over to in 2023. Otherwise, they're going to lose all their historical data. So it's a pretty big change right now. Um, Google basically got rid of the old platform that was around for 15 years or they're they're decommissioning it because of all the privacy issues, because of all the the big data problems that go along with um, having a system that's that old. So they're making everybody move over. It's a it's sort of a new system. It's got a lot of potential, a lot of fun, and we're training people on how to become master users of it. And so we've we have a live certification program we do that people can go through and earn that a certificate of achievement that they know Google Analytics for as much or better than anybody else out there. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's your, that's your program. You create that program for, for the new analytics software. Exactly. So we obviously didn't create the software, but we created uh, the, the way to use it. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened was Google rolled it out so fast that there was nobody else out there who could even really, who knew it was going on. So they, they didn't have any documentation. They didn't have any training themselves. And people would just email me, given my position of having, yeah, taught this stuff for many years. They're like, Hey, is there, do you have a course? When are you going to do a course? And I was like, you know what? Live courses, I don't know they translate very well to online. Um, but there was just so many people asking for it and so much demand that we've done it several times now. And it's been a enormous success for us. So let's, let's go on to like where, how you got to this point, you know, growing up, did you ever think you'd be in the coaching, the digital marketers of the day's world? No, not at all. Um, I, you know, it's funny. Like I, I grew up thinking I was gonna be a video game developer. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I went to computer science school. And what I learned was that video game development was basically just writing code and not so much the glory that I thought it was gonna be. And I was like, yeah, I don't really know if I want that for a career. Um, but while I was doing computer science, I saw these people getting rich, at least in my eyes, off of the internet. 
Yeah. Um, all these people, it was like 1999 to 2003 that I was in school. People like they went, they, they would drop out of school, make a ton of money going to California, going to San Francisco, being part of a funded startup. And then, and then while I was still in school thinking maybe I should quit and go do them and join them, the whole thing imploded and the whole, the whole market crashed. Yeah. And so I, I was left with this idea, this dream of, of the internet but there was no proven business model on the internet. There were no jobs in the internet. And so I didn't really know what I didn't know. And I think maybe that just that effect made me realize that my calling was to teach people how to take advantage of this opportunity. And so I feel like maybe those, those things molded me into who I was, was just seeing how I knew this was the future, but there were very few people who were on board with it and, and making it my mission to help people get on board with this new digital future. You know, I like actually a couple of people I've had on my show previous have talked about where they grew up in the in the dot com boom, where it's like all these companies were starting around them and, and they wanted to see success in themselves while they saw all these other people going into startups and stuff. Um, you know, I think it's fascinating. You know, a lot of companies came out of dot com boom. But, you know, there was so like you're saying, there's so little information like, you know, if, if there was so very few like. The internet was just being born, basically. Like yeah. in the 90s, the, in the nineties, you had AOL, you had, you know, like Yahoo, you had all these companies, you know, you even had MySpace. And, and look, MySpace <laughs> like didn't didn't move, didn't transform, didn't change. And and it lost its it's lost its power in the world. And then Facebook took over and, and Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram. Uh and, and I'm going somewhere with this question. Sorry, I'm not trying to ramble. Oh, no but like, you know, you see all these companies and they succeed, but each one of those companies now has a platform for marketing. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going at is do you see a lot of platform, not in just the Google Analytics, but do you see a lot of people needing coaching in marketing in, in on Facebook and Instagram? Because there's a lot of need in that because a lot of people use that for their uh, LinkedIn even. They use it for their marketing campaigns. 100%. I mean, there, it, the whole the whole area is the ma is a massive opportunity. You know, it's funny in the dot-com bubble been in the first time, you know, web 1.0, everything was like an on-premise infrastructure. You needed to have all these things there. And so you invested a lot of money in hardware mm -hmm. and just making things work. Um, Web 2.0 is all about users. It's all about network effects, getting people on board. The cost per user to maintain them is almost nothing. Everything's based on software. Everything's in the cloud. So it's a totally different business model that was enabled. And, and it's yeah. still really this riding forward, right? This distributed model where, yeah, it's all about getting a network of people and users and, and having capital venture capitalists give you money to get more users. And then you can either monetize with a subscription, which, you know, usually the subscription numbers are um, what 1% or fewer or like between one and 10% of your users will become power users, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then, and they'll pay you. Um, but the model of, okay, well, what if all your users paid a little bit of money or were, were basically your advertising eyeballs. Yeah. And so Google is the one who proved this in the first place where they basically are the most valuable advertising company on the planet by multiple fold. Google mm -hmm. or Facebook is super valuable too. Amazon has a valuable ad network. Am Apple yeah. implemented all these privacy changes. A lot of their revenue, a lot of their profit comes from ads. Um, there's all these different ad networks that come out. Microsoft has an ad network. So if you look at all the most valuable IT companies that are out there, it's it's basically getting users, step one, getting users, getting hooking up users with advertisers, step two, step three, just massive profits. So absolutely. So actually, you know, you're talking about major companies. I want to talk about a company that's actually been in the news a lot for me. I've been seeing it. Uh, it's losing users. And I'm wondering if it has to do with they're not marketing correctly. They're raising their prices. Uh, Netflix, you know, I want yeah. I, real quick. I, I know it's off topic, but Netflix, what do you, in your opinion, you know, as a digital marketer, what is Netflix doing wrong that they're losing so many users? Is, is, is it they're raising their prices? Is it they're not advertising correctly? Is they're not bringing enough content to the show? What what is what are they not doing correctly in 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 a marketer's eyes? Yeah, I mean, I think that part of it is that well, well, I, and I'm no expert on on Netflix and their yeah. business model. I can I can I can tell you what I've heard is that they focused entirely on big, getting the biggest catalog of content, spending as much money as they could to get content and acquiring users, and then once they once things, you know, once they started having to pay out, 
mm -hmm. the content and, and they started trying to make profits, they had to raise their prices. And so um, naturally, when you raise your prices, you're going to lose some users, but you're going to probably be more profitable if you can cut the content. So I think they're just finding the balance between the arms race of all the content possible, you know, launching 40 shows every single week versus what are the best shows. So they're really getting better at that. They're very data and analytics driven, which is nice. And then they didn't really have an advertising model at all. They resisted it for a long time, but they've just introduced it very recently. They've introduced a advertising tier or an ad supported tier. And I think that's really going to bring down the costs for them and, and anchor things. So I think they're actually well back on their track to being successful. They just had some downtime. A lot of that was really the post pandemic mm -hmm. people reevaluating their lives. Yeah. Like in 2020, you needed Netflix in 2021. Yeah. And yes, I noticed this did. with my online courses too. Not everybody. I had a big boom in 2020 of people doing online learning. Mm -hmm. um, 2021, once the vaccines were out and the world was opening up, people were like, oh, I'm actually going to go and be outside and <laughs> I'm going to enjoy <laughs> things. Right. So, and then also there's just the ups and downs of the economy. Like the 2021 economy was nuts, right? So maybe people were 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 still paying for Netflix even after 2020, even though they weren't out there. But then 2022, once the economy turns a little bit, once people are reevaluating their choices, mm -hmm. inflation, everything, then they start to cut the cord. And so I think it's just a natural thing where not every business can be at their all time high at all times. And I'd say they're they're in good shape moving forward, in my opinion. So you know you used the word analytics when you were describing uh, their their profits and stuff. You know I I've noticed a lot of companies tend to, to go towards their analytics on and and their data on what users are are looking at like like Microsoft Apple uh, what a Samsung all of these different companies what they're you know what someone's actually interested in um, and you know Amazon uses that and you were talking about Amazon Amazon uses that a fair bit to to target you with. Uh, what you want in life, what you want to buy. Uh, so when you do these courses, when you do these courses, uh, uh, like to help people get into the industry, is it to also help people like get the data for these companies to work in these companies to get the data to help them grow their business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, why why should big companies be the only ones that take advantage mm -hmm. of that, right? That can do it. Now, big companies, obviously, it's proprietary. They keep the data to themselves as much as they can, yeah. but they share with their advertisers. So if you're spending money and you pay to play on their ad system, they're going to give you a ton of data. Facebook gives you a ton of data around their ads. Every ad platform gives you insights into the user's mm -hmm. demographics. They let you target often by those demographics, by what they know about them. Um, by going after the right people, you're basically eliminating a lot of the junk that's out there. Um, their algorithm, and, and, and basically you're renting their audience, right? You're renting what they allow you to do. Um, you're get, you're able to infer what mm -hmm. what their systems, what what's going to be there. But what they do that's really revolutionary, especially in the last few years, is the machine learning mm -hmm. of them knowing, hey, I'm Jeff. Jeff buys stuff, so they'll actually <laughs> yeah. put ads in front of me because I click on ads and I buy stuff. I'll get more targeted than ever for all these different things. Like Jeff's an impulse buyer. Jeff buys this type of stuff, right? So they get me into their preferred audience yeah, and, yeah. and any other advertiser can advertise to me or somebody else, right? That's like this, that fits the profile and I'm more likely to buy. And they're actually using, they're mining their own data to get advertisers in front of the right people. And that's that's incredible. Now, could a user on their own do that? I mean, I teach that with their own mm -hmm. Google Analytics. Part of the reason why I love the Google Analytics system in particular is because it's the only owned data you have in pretty much the whole world out here, right? Mm -hmm. Everything else you have to pay to play. This one, you it's free and you own the data you collect. So you can create your own segments and you can create your own inferences as to who's going to be there. You can create your own history of what worked in your marketing and then use that to make your future marketing better. Everything else, you're just renting it. So I like how you were talking about that because for our website, we actually do use Google Analytics to monitor uh, the IT Tech Talks page. And, and you know, I, I it's it's fascinating because like you're saying, there was no, there's not really much learning. It's a learning curve. Cause I'm like yeah. looking at some of the data. I'm just like, if, if it weren't for the class I took in Google Analytics back in high school, like in before that, and now it gave me a base knowledge, but this new system is like, I basically added the site and was like having to pick and choose what I did because I was like, I don't want to make this any more complicated than I have to. Um, yeah. But you're right. There is there is a need for it because like the new system is very – for those just jumping into it, adding your site or adding whatever data you're trying to collect, it's very complicated. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to pull together 
all the data. Like we 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 get we what we're looking at, what we mainly look at on the site is what pages are people clicking, what what are they looking at, where are they looking at, and where are they from, and how yep. many users we are getting daily. And, and you know that's all the information we need. But for someone who's teaching when you're teaching a class, I, I think you want them to get more information so they can use that in the real world in a real job, like like um not just like a podcast, but or, or maybe a podcast, but maybe they're also using it to collect data for a, a company like they're they have their own private firm or or a little small business where they're collecting data for these companies and, and that's why i like to see, you know there, there's not many you know places out there that i can think of that literally will will go against these big colleges and offer these classes and you know i i don't know do, uh, real quick let's let's bounce back is yours a certification program or is it like have a degree kind of attached to it no, but just a certification. Okay. So it's, okay. it's not accredited. It's not, it doesn't claim to be, it's just yeah. really the knowledge. Like we sort of cut out a lot of the requirements, a lot mm -hmm. of the, you know, the theatrics yeah. of it. And it's really just, do you want to learn a skill or not? Do you want to be valuable in the in the marketplace or not? Yeah. Now where let's go, let's go to where you offer this class. Where can people, where I know we're going to add this at the end of the show. I'm going to put in the, in the links and bios for you, but where can people find this? Where can people get this information to, to get your class and, and yeah, attend? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So our website's datadrivenu.com, like mm -hmm. you, like university. Um, and then on there, you can join our mailing list. We send out a, a weekly newsletter every Friday that just gives you valuable information about what's happening in the digital marketing world. Um, and then we also have the programs listed right on the homepage. So um, okay. we do, we spin up what we call cohorts of classes. So you can join the next upcoming one um, mm -hmm. and, and, or you can just join the mailing list. Then we let you know when the next thing is coming up. We have different levels of cohort classes based on how in depth you want to be. If you want to do it yourself, they're they're a little bit more affordable, but you're just on your own. There's no support, there's no community to it. If you want to have, you know, instruction or interaction with your instructor, um, mm -hmm. it's it's still more affordable than a university for the same equivalent thing. But uh, that's something you can enroll in, and and we spin them up pretty much every single month. We have a new course going teaching these things, and so um, yeah. It looks like you have a, a like you got thir I'm looking at your website right now and you got like 40% off the master mastery course. Uh, you've got the 30% off the blueprints. It looks like you offer some good discounts for the courses as well. Yeah, exactly. So if anybody wanted to jump in, they um they can like I said, it's a, it's very affordable compared to like I teach a very similar course at a university level. Mm -hmm. Um similar actually less support and and I'm a, I'm about half the price or even a fourth of the price as to what it is there. Um, the reason okay. why is just because it's a different delivery model. Um, yeah. I, I can reach more people. And my goal, honestly, with a lot of the stuff is to get more people to switch over to the new platform before they don't really have a choice. And so it's sort of um, calm before the storm as, as Google rolls out the new version of their analytics tool. Um, a lot of people are going to have to make the switch over. And so I'm helping people get ahead of the game, get ahead of the curve. So real quick, I see here that you've had a hundred keynote presentations and in, in workshops in 20 countries. Can we talk about that? Where, sure. So you travel all around giving marketing advice and, and this kind of classwork for like in different keynote speaking presentations. Yeah. 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 I've, I've been invited all over the world. A lot of, a lot of most countries in Europe, I've done a talk in Okay. Asia, Australia, um, yeah, I think that's that's roughly it. I'm not sure if I've done South America yet or not. Okay. Um, but yeah, we uh, I was I was nomadic for about four years with my wife. Um, we basically I I travel with a laptop, <laughs> or actually with an iMac, a laptop, and my microphone, my handy microphone. Yeah. And would record courses, do live trainings. Basically, all that we needed was an internet connection to to get it going. And so I've been I've been doing that for a long time. I really liked it. Um. I had I had a child about three years ago, right before the pandemic, and so yeah. my my travels really I, I've not wanted to travel as much, but uh, it's picking up again now. So, okay. um, for example, I'm doing a talk in Hungary next year. Um, I've been nice. invited to do one in Italy. I did one in Italy earlier this year. Um, Romania, Greece, and some you know it's, it's everything from like a full, half day or a full day workshop yeah. to just being like you know. Um, and that's a lot of, I like doing workshops because it's a little bit more in depth than just yeah. talking on a stage. Like a keynote presentation is fun. It's inspiring, but the workshops are really cool because you can give people depth and then you have time to answer their questions. That's awesome. So, so you've been like, you, 
you, let's go from this. You've worked from like starting this thing and, and seeing it grow to now traveling and, and sharing your knowledge to a lot of different countries. So that's pretty awesome. I think, you know, yeah. getting, getting to go from just a small little, you know, workshop to like a big time, you know, workshop. It seems like your workshop has grown. I mean, I see here you've had over like 50,000 plus digital marketers enroll in your classes. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun. Just, uh, just riding the wave, I would say, and then also mm -hmm. just just taking on new challenges and new opportunities. And and I I love new challenges because yeah, you know, you you do it a few times in your hometown. It's you know you th you're like okay, that's cool, but it feels like a big fish in a small pond. Then you start going out there and and you get knocked down a little bit, realizing hey, not everything you say is culturally relevant in this yeah. culture. So I, I've learned a lot about culture, how people learn. I've tried to slow down a little bit. Um, but I, I do, do feel like by like, I still get people who come up to me or email me and like, Hey, I was in the audience at the thing you did in Athens five yeah. years ago. And then they're like, Hey, I want to do this new course or, Hey, I was there in Estonia. Remember me? You know, I got my picture with you, like that type of stuff. It's really sort of a cool way to go out there and meet your audience and the people. And it puts a real, like something I was going to touch on is that analytics is really just the story mm -hmm. of people <laughs> and how they behave. And so I, I really like the, it's sort of like the in-person experience and, and just going to these places helps me put faces and names behind the numbers. And I think that's a really important part of all this stuff is to make, make you realize that these are humans yeah and their human behavior. They're not just numbers. And this, that's really helpful to see them and meet them. So have you seen, has anybody reached out to you after they've done your class and said, Hey, I landed this job at here or, or I've grown with a successful small business of my own. Have, have you had any success stories oh, yeah. from, from yourself? Time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I just had one who like, so a lot of people, when I taught in the university and in person, mm -hmm. they were dislocated workers. Like they, they had a job, they didn't stay up to date with their skills and they got laid off or let go. And then they came to the university as part of like a, you know, a program like they, you know, yeah. like they, they got government assistance to go and learn digital marketing. And so people come in in that level. One lady just reached out to me like a week or two ago and she said, Hey, um, I don't know if you remember me, but I was in your 2015 class and it's been six, a few years since we talked. Well, I started a UX user experience agency uh -huh. the year after our class. I was more confident than ever because of that. And I used everything you taught me in class. And last year, our we sold our business successfully. So, oh wow! Um, since <laughs> and and a lot of people came to me, they were like, "Let go." They were they were down in their luck, and mm -hmm. they're like emailing me from their LinkedIn, and they're the director of marketing at a Fortune 500 company. So, I would say that the alumni network and the and the the just the network effect of this thing has been tremendous. People are executives now that came to me not in their finest and their most proud hour. Yeah. And that really, really makes me feel good. Yeah, You know, you know, that just, that's awesome because when you think about, you know, you, you go into this and you are like, you weren't really thinking that it was going to turn into something. And now you have all these people who are like thanking you for getting them back on their feet and stuff. That's pretty awesome. You know, you get to say you actually help some people out and, and it's not all companies get to say that because a lot of companies, you know, right now, especially there's a lot of layoffs and stuff. So I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of people driving towards your network, towards your programs to actually look at getting into something different. Yeah. Um, you know, the tech industry, while it's still, you know, up and down, it's still constantly changing and there's still always new jobs are opening up and especially marketing jobs. Yeah. Because like the marketing world, there's always new way to market a product, to market yourself, to market a business, to market for small business. There's always different ways to do that. So I think having uh, your company is actually going to benefit a lot more people, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, it's, it's fun because I, I learned along the way like when I was teaching, I, I started teaching in a, at a university in a classroom and I was in my, like in my early thirties. Right. Yeah. And people were in there, they were 60 years old. They'd been working in marketing for 30 or 40 years. And they're like, why are you teaching me? And I'm, why am I not <laughs> teaching you? And it was never really about who deserves to be teaching, but yeah. the real, the real thing they learned or that I learned is that marketers like marketing is a timeless thing. Like they haven't really, like how we market people, how to get people to listen to you hasn't really changed over the years. It's the tactics to get in front of them because almost every two or three years, they completely change. Yeah. Like what worked last year 
will not work in two years. Mm -hmm. It's almost guaranteed, right? And so that's the updating of skills that's really important. And so what I teach people is that it's not so much about whether you're a good marketer or not. And that was never the question. <laughs> it's about whether what you what you know is translated into what works in the marketplace mm -hmm. now. And that's what this upgrade is all about. And then the cool thing is, if you've ever been laid off because you didn't keep your skills up to date, you're probably not going to fall victim to that again in the future, right? Because it yep. goes on to more maintenance mode. You're not actually like having to reinvent the wheel and learn 20 years of things you missed. You don't have to learn the internet. You're learning just maintenance. Yep. Well, Jeff, it has been a pleasure having you on. Uh, you know, I really, really look forward to seeing what your company does. And I hope that we can reconnect here in the near future and, and see uh, maybe in a year or so and see what you've done and where you've gone. Uh, I'm going to be keeping up to date on your classes and watching what you're, what you're doing on your website and, and maybe even possibly like subscribing because like, I know that like with it changing, not that I'm in marketing, um, I'm actually looking to do a, um, class here through Coursera for, cool. um, prop, what is it? Oh my gosh, I've blanked on what the course was. Product management or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was looking to get in it because I want to get my skills up. But I'm in a I'm basically in a corporate setting outside this podcast. So I kind of want to get like more skills. And that would be something I would look into getting. Not that I'm going into marketing, but it would be nice to have. Yeah, for sure. Um, I get you. Yeah. So, but Jeff, uh, thank you so much for coming on. For those listening who are interested in Jeff's class, all the information will be available at www.ittechtalkpodcast.com. Uh Jeff's bio will be there where you can check out his links. Uh, the classes he offers on the link to the site. Um, there also is, and for those listening, I, I, I'm really excited to announce there's a new blog part of the site. Um, I am also a tech person. I love tech and uh, I'm offering a blog part of my site where I'm going to be doing quick little reviews of little products that I'm interested in. And like what has stood out to me as I purchased and or owned a product and have tried it out and or I'm looking into purchasing the product due to it's valuable in the market. Uh, so you can check that out. There also will be, it's not just tech. There will also be people like Jeff go on the show. So I'll like talk a little bit about my experience with talking to Jeff on there. It'll kind of be like extra content that'll be available on the site. Uh, again, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. This has been great. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.